take a look at molybdenum on carbon. We're starting down here at the bottom. This is the uh, temperature program reduction profile of our support material. Uh, the support can be reduced with hydrogen. We get a positive peak uh, somewhere in about 550 centigrade range. As we go to higher temperature, uh, the oxidized edges of graphite will thermally decompose. Uh, releasing CO or CO2. Uh, so we get, uh, we get a negative uh, peak at about 800 degrees centigrade due to this loss of oxygen uh, from the carbon support that was not, uh, that was not reduced uh, with hydrogen. If we look at adding uh, molybdenum to this, you can see that uh, we have peaks build up. They grow uh, 
with increasing molly concentration, this is going from 3% uh, to 24%. We have a low temperature peak, we have a high temperature peak, and there's a little bit of structure. If we look at deconvoluting these peaks, this is for 9% molly on carbon. Uh, we can uh, we can deconvolute this one easily into four peaks. Uh, S is the peak for the carbon support, and we have two low temperature peaks that we label X and Y, and then we have a high temperature peak that uh, that has been labeled C. Now. If we look at molybdenum on carbon as the catalyst, molybdenum on carbon uh, with syngas uh, produces hydrocarbons. It's a uh, uh, fairly poor uh, Fischer-Tropsch catalyst. If we add potassium uh, to molybdenum on carbon, we find that the hydrocarbon forming reaction is greatly suppressed. Uh, that uh, alcohol synthesis uh, reaction improves. So if we look at what happens on adding with the TPR of these catalysts, here again is our carbon support. This is molly on carbon uh, without any potassium. If we start to add potassium to this, what we notice is that our reduction shifts to much lower temperature and that uh, our major peak is this first peak okay, uh, that, uh, that is appearing. Okay. Again, if we deconvolute, we have the peak of our support. A high temperature peak, you can see that this peak that we've labeled Y the second low temperature peak has, uh, has become greatly enhanced on adding potassium to, uh, to the molybdenum on a carbon catalyst. All right, there's a lot of data here. I'm only going to focus look at uh, the data over on the right hand side. Uh, by calibrating our system we're able to estimate what the valence of the molybdenum is. And we're looking here at, uh, this is after low temperature reduction, this is after high temperature reduction. So if we look at after low temperature reduction up to about uh, 550C, uh, we see that without potassium, that the average oxidation state of the molly is about plus five. Right. With potassium, our average oxidation state uh, of the molly drops to about plus three. After the high temperature reduction, uh, with no uh, potassium present, our average oxidation state here is shown to be about plus two. Okay. It decreases and then comes up and seems to level off uh, somewhere uh, between two and three. Now, we have found that uh, whereas adding potassium to volume on carbon makes a pretty good catalyst, if we introduce a second promoter, we get an even better catalyst. Uh, both from the standpoint of activity and also from product distribution, and the product distribution shifts uh, toward higher alcohols, and your predominant products are C2 and C3 alcohols uh, with this particular catalyst. Uh, again, uh, we're going to look at uh, what happens when we add uh, uh, potassium to a molly nickel catalyst. This is our, our carbon support. This is mo our molly nickel combination without potassium. If we start adding potassium uh, to the catalyst once again, we see that we have a shift 
uh, change in our peak shape so that the low temperature peaks are, are uh, enhanced. And in fact, the total area under the curve uh, is also enhanced uh, significantly uh, with, the, with the addition of the potassium. So if we look at the, the effect that the potassium has uh, on, uh, on the area of this catalyst, uh, this is in, uh, in arbitrary units. Uh, this is just below 1 uh, times 10 to the 7th. Uh, this would be integrator counts okay. uh, with no potassium present. Uh, when potassium is added, and this is changing the potassium ratio, uh, the area under the curve has essentially doubled on, uh, on adding potassium. If we look at this in a slightly different fashion, again, this is our carbon support. Okay. This is moly with potassium. Uh, so we, we know that when we add potassium to the moly, we've enhanced uh, the reduction. We've also lowered the reduction temperature. You can see that the further effect that nickel has when it's added to this catalyst to lower the reduction temperature uh, is still further. We all know that uh, the way we make a catalyst is vital okay, in the way that it will perform. And I'm showing uh, TPR profiles of uh, moly nickel potassium catalysts uh, that were prepared in three different fashions. Okay, this bottom curve is just our carbon support. Uh, on the uh, curve B, uh, potassium was added to the support first, followed by moly, and then by nickel. Okay. If we look at the P TPR profile, we have a fairly flat profile uh, for the TPR spectrum of this material. Uh, this catalyst produces no alcohols. Okay. It's, it's strictly a hydrocarbon uh, producing catalyst. This is the, the catalyst I've been talking about uh, all along. This is uh, where we, we've done the, our thermal treatments of nitrogen after each of the steps. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we look at uh, the combination moly first and then nickel, and then lastly potassium without doing the thermal treatments. Okay. And we see that we have quite a different reduction profile. Uh, which uh, for the for the catalyst did not have the thermal treatments. Okay. If uh, if we look at performance, uh, I mentioned I mentioned that the first catalyst where we just added potassium first produced no alcohols. Uh, here we're looking at performance. This is in space-time yield and rate of hydrocarbon production. So that as we increase in temperature, the hydrocarbon production stays fairly low and then takes off okay, as we're approaching 400 degrees C. Uh, the second shows alcohol production. Uh, the triangles are the catalyst without the calcining in nitrogen. The circles are the catalyst with the nitrogen. So we notice that it goes to a maximum, okay, and we're getting much better performance uh, with calcining than without. And then uh, lastly, it is showing selectivity to higher alcohols, which would be C2 and above. And uh, again, we're seeing much better performance uh, on a catalyst that we're improving calcined uh, in nitrogen uh, rather than without. So uh, 
in conclusion, what I believe that we're seeing with our temperature program reduction studies is a positive effect of the promoters, and it seems that the positive effect of these promoters is to aid reduction, uh, in that we see larger areas in our TPR profile when we have potassium present than without, so it looks like we have a greater extent of reduction uh, when potassium is present. Uh, the reduction also takes place at lower temperature. When we, when we add the second promoter, uh, nickel, to the system, we find that this also seems to be adding, or pardon me, aiding okay, uh, the reduction of, uh, of the molybdenum catalyst. And of course, we find that the preparation of methods affects its performance. Thank you. Further, yes, and uh, once again, thank you very much. Thank you.